And welcome back folks, welcome back to Let's Play Fallout. Last time we picked up some log files um, from about Captain Maxon and some other person. And I actually forgot, I didn't bother to read them. And uh, so that's what we want to do. If I can find, ah yeah. So I think it was... Mm, so Captain Maxon's diary and Richard, well, I think it was Richard Gray's audio diary. Yeah, that okay. That, just um, just making sure it was right. Yes, okay. Captain Maxon's diary, October ten, two thousand seventy-seven. I. Roger Maxon, Captain, serial number 072389. I've started this log because it doesn't look good for any of us. And I'd like for people to know what really happened here. All hell broke, broke loose when we finally discovered what those scientist bastards were up to. The Colonel has locked himself in his office and seems to be having some sort of breakdown. The men are screaming for blood. They are looking to me for answers and I... I am not sure what to do. Someone has to do something, though, before this place sinks to an anarchistic bloodbath. October 12th. Every time we get a report from higher up, things get worse here. The war is going in a very bad direction, and this place is about to go into full mutiny with all this with all the chaos that, that entails. I stopped one of the, the men from executing a scientist today and demanded that we interrogate them to find out what their orders were. October 13th. I killed a man today. I was interrogating Chief, Chief Scientist Anderson and he was giving me the full details of the inhuman experiments. He said his orders came from the government, but I didn't buy it. He started screaming about how he was following orders, how he was a military man and I just shot him. I tell myself it was to keep him from causing a full mutiny among the men, but I'm not sure. October 15th. I tried again to speak to the colonel through the door, but he seems to have completely lost touch with reality. I broke down the door with several of the men just in time to watch him blow his head off. Right before he pulled the trigger, he said he was sorry. October 18th. By killing the egghead, I seem to have confirmed my position as leader of the men. They follow me without question now. The interrogations invariably end up being executions. Shellman held out the longest, but the end result was the same. Her arguments about her orders were a bit too specific to be completely made up. I'm getting a real bad feeling in my gut about how this is all going to end up and I don't even lie to myself anymore about my reasons for executing the scientists. October 20. I finally replied to the outside world over our radio. I don't know why they never sent anyone here to see what was happening when we stopped responding to their transmissions. It doesn't make any sense. Well, they'll come now. I declared ourselves seceded from the Union. They remember Jefferson Davis. What will history say about me? October 22nd. What the hell is going on? We declare ourselves to be in full desert desertion from the army and no longer under the government's command, and what happens? Nothing. Something bad is coming down. I can't believe those bastards finally did it. Damn them all to hell. They finally let the A-bombs fly. We were right in the middle of trying to pry the real story out of Van Felden when we completely lost contact. I have a feeling the research center was hit hard. I don't know why, just call it a gut feeling. It seems inconceivable that we were not targeted. I'm sure China will make up for that oversight real soon. Luckily, 
we had moved our families from outside into the facility the day before yesterday. We do, we do not yet know if the fallout has reached the, this area. October 25th. Sergeant Plattner volunteered to go outside today to take specific readings on the atmosphere. It seems the radiation has not spread this far. Since he was wearing his power armor, there was no threat to him from radiation, but if he had been exposed, he would have been to be exiled. We don't have adequate decontamination facilities here. October 26th. I convinced the men that we should bury the scientists. I don't know why. Perhaps it was to ease my conscience. I finally started to believe their stories when the last one was dying. My god. What have I become? October 27th. We are leaving this godforsaken place today. I'm leading the exodus to the old government bunker at Lost Hills. I'm leaving this lock behind to be buried when this place goes in the next decade. Exchange. Who knows? Maybe someone will find it someday. And indeed, someone did. Um, so this was a little bit of backstory behind the history of the of the Brotherhood of Steel. Um, and, well, in the Fallout universe in general. Richard Gray, audio diary. Uh, I'm, I'm dying. I need to get this down before the pain overwhelms me. I can't believe that I was finally able to drag myself out of that bed. The slime did not affect me, but I nearly drowned. I don't know what happened to Harold. He was standing right next to me when the crane knocked me into the vat. He must have been killed or, or he would have tried to help me. Francine is dead. Killed by one of those robots. I have no idea how much time has passed. I was able to hack the computer to turn off the robots and record this. But now I'm at is slipping away. There's much pain. The green slime that I, was, that I was immersed in is the source of all the mutations we trace to here. My skin is to fester and peel. In other areas it is bubbling and starting expelling a green mucus like substance. Some days the pain is almost tolerable. I can actually walk a few steps again. It seems inconceivable that I dragged myself all the way up here from the vet room. Strangely, I'm actually feeling stronger, though I'm still in a lot of pain. Everything seems to be getting smaller. I think I consumed one of the mutated things scurrying around here today. Before I knew what was happening, some sort of tendril had sprung from my stomach and covered the poor creature. <coughs> As soon as I had sucked the rodent into my gut, I could actually feel its mind, I think. There's the very real possibility that I'm going slowly insane and can no longer differentiate between what is real and what is hallucination. Maybe I'm still slowly dying in the vet, and I've all imagined this. Things are becoming more clear to me every day. This toxin has actually improved my mind. I feel that I can understand even the most complex philosophical questions simply and directly. It's as, it's as if all the layers of artifice have been stripped away. I wonder what would happen if I submerged an animal in the vats for a prolonged period of time. Would it gain awareness? The strongest thing is starting is happening to the animals. Sorry. The strangest things thing is happening to the animals. They actually become smarter and more aware of their surroundings. I dipped a dog and a rat at the same time today and they were fused together. It's not quite two creatures anymore, but it's more than one. Perhaps this is the future. 
the coming together of different creatures in some sort of harmonious unity. I no longer consume the different animals I create simply for sustenance. I have become the instrument through which hum unity will be achieved. I am so much more than a human being now. It is time to bring others into the glory that is the unity. A lost soul has finally strayed into my home. I was so surprised. I consumed him before dipping. A mistake I shall not make again. His mind was so primitive as to be repulsive to my refined cognitive abilities. I've begun to modify, modify myself to be more pleasing to the unity by injecting small doses of the virus into my body. The slime in the vats is a man-made man -made virus called the forced evolutionary virus. This information was acquired from my newly grown Neuralink with the base computer. The few wanderers that have found their way here have to be a disappointment to me. They can't seem to mutate correctly. The best I've been able to create are some big and dumb mutants. Most can recall nothing from before I initiated them into the wonders unity. I only feed on them for fuel now. Their minds are nothing to me. Oh glorious creator! I have succeeded in spreading the complete joy of unification to another soul. Unlike the others, his total radiation count was low. I believe this is the factor we have been overlooking all this time, as it seems the conversion is more successful in the cases with less radiation damage. I have never known such glory as I felt when taking his mind into our own. We are beginning to create an army dedicated to unifying the wonderful diversity of life. We have trained them to continue our work here while we search out more populated areas to take into ourselves. We are beginning to feel the limitations of our body that is mobile. We must find a permanent home, with a greater store of knowledge and a steady supply of biomass. We have stopped increasing ourselves until we can find this new unification center. When we have arrived, we will continue to grow and feed until we have brought peace and unity to the entire world. Um, so apparently the master to which the humans have been referring to is Richard Gray or rather what is left of Richard Gray. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to get rid of those two guys and blow up the army base. However, before we kill them, we actually should eavesdrop on the on their conversation because it is plot important. Um, well, I'm quite impressed. My okay, this was not supposed to happen. Um, I actually wonder whether they continued talking. No, I don't. No, I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to reload here. Um, because I rather much want to, yeah, hear hear about their conversation. Um, no, not lockpick, sneak. It worked when I did this off camera. Um, so maybe I'm just. Well, I'm quite. Hmm. I can assure you um, that it worked when I tried this off screen. Um, let's try this one more time. Hmm. Maybe we just... Ah, yeah. Okay. Your report, Van Hagen. The master is pleased with your progress, but his need is great and time is limited. The master should know that the horror material is limited. We cannot create our soldiers without more stock. 
he's aware of your problem. He's working on it as we speak. To tell me of his plans, we will need to coordinate activities if the unity is to succeed. The master has become aware of an undiscovered living world. With that much raw material, we can create a great force according to the prediction software. It will be the numbers we will need to succeed in. Excellent, this is the most fortunate. Are the inhabitants contaminated? Oh yes, this is the best this is the best part. The representative is only an example, they are clean, pure strain. Oh, this is the most exciting. What <laughs> what is that? We plunder. Wall 13, and we shall have them soon, very soon. Wall 13, and we'll have them and we shall have them soon, very soon. Yeah, we gained 1,000 points of experience for eavesdropping this conversation. Well, I'm quite impressed. My spies told me you were resourceful, but they seem to have underestimated your talents. Guards, capture him. Um, how about no? Um, okay. I think we need to dispose of this guy with the, um, I don't know, um, okay, he's blind, um, um, however, this guy has a rocket launcher, um, hmm, I'm not sure who to target first. Well, he's, he's a, okay, I'm going to just go for him, in the hopes that, um, yeah, this rocket will not hit me. Um, actually, this wasn't so bad, because now, um, what, he has two shots? What the fuck? Ah. Okay. The darkness of the afterlife is all that awaits you now. May you find more peace in that world than you found in this one. Ah. And when we'll come back, folks, we will do this again. So until next time, folks, until then.